Microbiota is important, it's very important for all of us uh, for a healthy life. Uh, and uh, it's important also for IBS patient. Uh, and it's important for the effect that uh, the microbiota could have uh, on the brain of these people. And these are the topic um, uh, on which Professor Stephen Collins, gastroenterology from the McMaster University in Ontario, in Canada, has uh, provided a lecture here in Bologna during the IBS Bologna Days 2016. And uh, Professor Collins, uh, uh, you said that the microbiota communicate with the brain. How communicate and which are the demonstration of this, uh, yes. this fact? <clears throat> So that in the last five years there have been many studies uh, in, uh, in animals to show that the microbiota in the intestine, the bacteria that live in the intestine, can communicate with the brain. So the evidence is the three lines of evidence. One, if you take a mouse that has never had any bacteria, its behavior is abnormal. It behaves in a way a little crazy, um, very, uh, takes many risks. But when you give this mouse bacteria, its behavior becomes normal. So the bacteria have changed the behavior of the mouse. The second is we can sometimes take the, the microbiota from two different types of mouse. Some mice are very irritable, angry. Some mice are very calm. We can take the microbiota from one kind of these mice, put it inside the microbiota, in, into the intestine of the other mouse, and we can modify the behavior according to the, the behavior of the donor mouse. The third line of evidence is when you take a mouse with a normal microbiota and you make a disturbance of the microbiota with diet or with drugs, we also find we can change the behavior and we can change the brain chemistry. So in answer to the question, how does this happen? What are the mechanisms? We are still studying this, but basically there are several, several mechanisms. One is by activating the immune system in the intestine. This makes a signal to the brain to change the behavior. That's one possibility. The second is the bacteria produce chemicals, the metabolism, from their metabolism, that can either directly or indirectly through our metabolism change the behavior. And the third is the behavior is, is that the bacteria can, in some situations, change the, the behavior of the nerves that transmit information to the brain. So basically three, three mechanisms. Which ones are the most important? We still need to find out. And what do we know about humans? In humans, uh, there is now some evidence um, that, and, we, and in humans, of course, we cannot do the same kind of experiments that we are able to do in the mouse. So we are left with the possibility then of giving, for example, uh, probiotics. So there are now about three or four studies where uh, they've given probiotics uh, either to healthy individuals or uh, more recently to patients with, um, with uh, abnormal behavior, with IBS, uh, and found that, it, um, that they can change uh, the behavior. It's very specific probiotics, um, but uh, how it works, uh, we are not so sure. But clearly, uh, the message is that the demonstrations that we are making in the mouse seem to be applicable to the, to the human as well. Given the importance of microbiota, um, the, the scientific community is studying the ways to influence the microbiota. Yes. Which are the possibilities, uh, Professor Collins? Right. So, in terms of uh, trying to manipulate the microbiota, uh, what are the possibilities? At the moment, they are very limited. Uh, so, of course, you can change the microbiota with antibiotics, but this is not a good idea because there are risks with taking antibiotics and also the results are not specific, they are not predictable, so it's not a good idea. We have prebiotics and we have probiotics. These can be used to try to change, to modify the, uh, the microbiota uh, and they are being used, but you have to remember that every probiotic is different, it's like different drugs. So you have to choose very carefully 
which probiotic you're going to use uh, to justify it with animal studies to show it has an effect. So not every probiotic will work in this situation. The third possibility, of course, is to consider a fecal transplantation. But this is not something that we recommend for IBS because fecal transplantation is, you know, it's early years of, of using it. We do not know the consequences of, of fecal transplantation, and so we reserve therapy with fecal transplantation for very serious diseases like Clostridium difficile colitis. Uh, for the moment, we are studying how uh, fecal microbiota transplantation works, what are the mechanisms, because we really don't understand it now. And then maybe in the course of time, we can simplify it, perhaps make it a little bit more easy uh, and a little bit perhaps more safer. And then, then in that situation, it is possible that some IBS patients might benefit. But for the moment, I think it's too early to consider this.